Li is a well-known Xi loyalist and oversaw strict COVID controls in Shanghai earlier this year. Chinese President Xi Jinping broke precedent on Sunday by paving the way for his third term as president and the likely appointment of a prime minister with no previous experience to be vice prime minister. Li Chang, Shanghai Party Secretary, came second to Xi in a meeting with the press on Sunday. Li is a well-known Xi loyalist and oversaw strict COVID controls in Shanghai earlier this year. State offices such as President and Premier are not confirmed until the next annual meeting of the Chinese government, which usually takes place in March. Outgoing Premier Li Keqiang had emerged second to Xi at a similar meeting with the press after the conclusion of the party's 19th National Congress in 2017. However, according to a state media biography, Li Chang has not previously held a vice premier role. In addition to Xi and Li Chang, five other people have been appointed to the new Politburo Standing Committee, the core circle of power in the ruling Chinese Communist Party. Zhao Leji, who directs party discipline, Wang Huning, known for his work on ideology, Beijing Party Secretary Kai Qi, Ding Xuexiang, known as Xi's chief of staff, and Li Shi, Guangdong Party Secretary. In a speech on Sunday, she emphasized the party's leadership, according to an official translation in A New Journey to Turn China into a Modern Socialist Country. He said China cannot develop in isolation from the world, but the world needs China too. She claimed China would open its door ever wider, and the country was deepening reform and opening up across the board and in pursuing high-quality development. Four of the previous seven members of the Politburo Standing Committee did not make it onto the list of new Central Committee members announced on Saturday. The only three who stayed were Xi, Wang Huning, and Zhao Leji. This Central Committee determines the core leadership, the Politburo and its Standing Committee. Economic policy at the highest level in China is largely determined by members of the Politburo. However, Li Keqiang, in his role as Premier and Head of the State Council, China's highest executive body, was an official face and head of implementation. She holds three key positions. With constitutional amendments in 2018, she set the course for an unprecedented third five-year term as president. In addition to purging allegedly corrupt officials, she has consolidated his power over the past decade with groups that sidestepped the prime minister's typical economic policy responsibilities, Reuters pointed out. Notable heads of ministries who remained on the list of the party's new central committee included. He was also appointed to the new NDRC Politburo. Bruce Pang, JLL's chief economist and research director for Greater China, said some of the Central Committee appointments had finance and local government experience, noting that the shakeup will not lead to dramatic changes of China's macro policies. We expect that policy focus will not be on launching new stimulus, but on implementing the existing policies and letting them take effect, said Pang. Propping up domestic demand to support jobs thus remains key. Pang also noted that Li Chang has previously headed three provincial-level areas, including Shanghai, which are known for their contribution to China's opening up and economic growth. Xi's opening speech at the party's 20th National Congress reiterated China's greater focus on national security and high-quality growth. In fact, this departure from the high-speed growth of the past few decades means China faces a new situation for attracting foreign investment, said an official at the Economic Planner. While Xi's report to Congress delivers a strong message of policy continuity, signals that there are competing goals and that some types of economic growth are favored over others, Gabriel Wildaw, chief executive of consulting firm Tinio, said in a note. Party leaders want advanced manufacturing and technology to be the key drivers of growth, said Wilda. She has also stressed the need for unity within the Chinese Communist Party to achieve national rejuvenation.
The 20th National Convention, which ended Saturday, approved an amendment to the national constitution to include more, she thought, according to state media. For many China observers, the question is not how she will consolidate his power, but who might be his successor. Under Xi, China's bureaucracy is less autonomous and more tied to him personally, especially since there are few checks on power, Yuan Yuanong, an associate professor of political science at the University of Michigan, wrote in July in the Journal of Democracy. The Chinese Communist Party's threat to seize power, she said, will be succession battles resulting from Xi's personalist rule.